Okay, I got a you know, good start today on Florida. I thought we had a, a good workmanlike blue collar practice today. I um, thought the guys came out with the right mentality and improving and getting better on a Tuesday practice and a lot of good on good work and, and got some good scout work and getting ready for a really good Florida team. A lot back on offense, a lot of uh, experience on the offensive side of the ball. Kyle Trask, is, uh, you, know, you got to like the guy just as far as sticking it out uh, waiting his turn and then cashing in on his opportunity when he had it. And he's a really good football player. I think he's got a great pocket presence. He really feels and evades the rush extremely well, buys time for himself, constantly has his eyes downfield, uh, which creates some issues. That's why they have some a lot of explosives or off-rhythm off plays. Uh, but, but a really good football player. Kyle Pitts is you know probably the best tight end in the country, I would assume he is. Uh, certainly the best one we'll see. Uh, but long, athletic. Uh, has speed, difficult matchup guy, uh, but has a very good knack of getting open, finding space, and, and Trask, obviously, uh, they've got a good rapport as far as the, the throwing game is concerned. Four out of five seniors on the offensive line, uh, big physical guys that we've faced. Reese has actually played uh, for Dan at Mississippi State, so he obviously knows the scheme and system, so a lot of a lot of snaps logged up front, but they got good skill people. Grimes is back, uh, Copeland and, and uh, Kadarius Tony's a guy in the return game and as a receiver. Uh, you've got to always know where he is. And then um, uh, Malik Davis is back off, and I believe he had an injured knee or foot, but uh, another guy that brings him another dimension as well as Pierce. Defensively, Todd Grantham's a guy I've got a lot of respect for. They lost some really good players off a very good defense last year. Ventrell Miller had an outstanding game Saturday. I think he had 14 or 15 tackles. Marco Wilson, they've got uh, Kiera Elam, some good cover guys on the back end, and they got good players. They've recruited good players that had a couple that were out uh, on Saturday. McPherson's an outstanding kicker. They've always been good in the kicking game uh, as far as that's concerned. But uh, noon kick, down in Gainesville, We're looking forward to getting back on the field. And uh, injury-wise for us, Israel and Jamar Brown moved around today. I thought looked fine. Uh, so, but they're day to day. Uh, Alex Huntley's probably out this week again. Hopefully, get him back next week. Sherrod Green subluxed his hip. He's got a fracture in his hip. He'll probably be out four to six weeks. And then uh, there's no surgery required. Uh, unusual injury. Uh, they're going to take a look at it between four and six weeks and see what they what they do from there. Hopefully, he'll be back within that time. But it's a very unusual injury. Uh, small fracture in his hip there. And I'll open up for any question, questions. Hey, Brian, with the first one. Uh, hey, coach. I guess with the the scheme that Florida runs, how much does that put? How much of a stress does that put on your offensive front? And when you looked back at kind of some of the issues you guys had up front, was that communication or was it just kind of one on ones and assignment stuff? As far as our offense or their then their defense, uh, as as your offensive line against Tennessee and tight ends. Well, we did, we we got whipped at the tight end position and, and as far as the run game was concerned that created some issues, whether it was from a backside cutoff and then whether it was at the point of attack, um, you know, one missed assignment that was a critical error going in uh, and then just flat out getting physically whipped uh, on a couple other occasions. Um, but, you know, coming out of the game, we felt like the right side, we need to play better there. Um, felt like that uh, Dylan and uh, Hutch and Eric – you know, played well enough for us to win. We got to get better at the right guard and the right tackle position. And uh, so looking at that this week, again, we're continuing to look at the right combinations for us. All positions are open to get the best five, six, seven, eight, whatever it takes to, to be successful. Uh, but we need to run the ball better. I think we did in the second half, and Mike came in at halftime. First thing he said is we need to start stretching the field. We need to get them off of us a little bit. And that's what he did, and that opens up some things in the running game. Uh, so it all works hand in hand, and I think you know it's it's a feeling out process for a little bit of Mike in a game situation of, uh, of what feel people feel comfortable with, and we score four or six possessions in the second half. So pretty evident he, we did a nice job making adjustments. Eric Boynton. Yeah, well, can you kind of describe the, uh, the the level of uh, the sense of emphasis this week as far as getting more wideouts involved in the passing game, and I assume moving forward, you certainly don't want to see. Uh, that many targets to, to shy. I mean, you did a great job, but, but certainly you're going to need a few other guys to get involved. Yeah, we need some more guys to step up. But, you know, you got to win in man coverage in this league. We had some guys targeted, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, and other opportunities. You can't create separation. It's hard to throw it to you. So we're not just going to throw the ball to a guy that can't get open. I mean, at the end of the day, we got to look at some other guys. Luke Doty's going to have some opportunities. And if they can't win in man coverage, it's, it's hard to throw it to you. And we're going to see man coverage Saturday. We're going to see it for the rest of the year in our league. And that's just part of it, especially in those 
uh, deny the ball downs third and six or less, that's what you're going to see. And you've got to win versus man coverage. So we're continuing to, to, to rep those guys. Well, I felt like we did some decent things in training camp and was disappointed uh, outside of Xavier and, and shy at that position. So we got to get better. Dick Cox. A lot of people said that Florida is probably this year's uh, LSU team of last year. Have you seen any, after watching the film, any comparisons of that? Well, I mean, again, I think they're very balanced in what they do. Dan's always going to have balance as far as the, the, the run and pass game is, is concerned. There are some very difficult matchups uh, for you. You know, obviously Pitts is a matchup issue, how you're going to handle him, and they do a good job of moving around. Kadarius Tony's a matchup issue. Grimes is a big guy that's a physical receiver that can catch the 50-50 balls. Uh, so there's some, there's some skill issues that you've got to deal with schematically. Uh, and then, you know, they're a very experienced offensive line. Heggie's moved to center, who I think is a really good player um, that directs their offensive line. They didn't have a lot of mistakes uh, on Saturday as far as uh, run-throughs and things are like of that nature that are concerned, and they've got good backs. So, I mean, you know, anytime you have really good skill people and you've got a good offensive line that, and, and you've got a guy that can pull the trigger and make good decisions, which Kyle does that, uh, that does create some issues for you. Obviously, Saturday they were really good. Uh, they really played well, and uh, we're looking forward to the opportunity. David Conagher. Well, you mentioned before how confident you are in Parker. So, two questions. Uh, one, how relaxing is it to have him back there, knowing he's you know pretty automatic right now? And two, how pleasing is it to see him doing pretty well, considering his career didn't have the best start? No, it didn't. And I had a rough start <clears throat> to start out, and I'm really proud of him continue to persevere, fight through it, continue to work. And really after his first season, committed himself uh, from a technical standpoint, uh, from technique, really worked extremely hard <clears throat> to put himself in the position that he is now. And I've got all the confidence in the world in him um, that to go make kicks. You know, you look, look back to the other night, you got over three minutes left, you got fourth and 12. If it's fourth and seven, we're going for it. If it's we don't have three timeouts, we're probably going for it at fourth and twelve. But you got three timeouts, and I got great confidence that then when we get the ball back, we're getting the ball back to go win the game. We're not trying to tie the game. We're going to go win the game because you kick a field goal because I know he's going to make it. I've got great high confidence level he's going to make it. We kick it off. We call three timeouts, and we get the ball back with a minute and a half to go, which is an eternity in college football because the clock stops on first downs. So we had plenty of time to go win the game. And Parker allows you to do some things and makes some decisions like that. If you're not so sure about that position, you don't feel good about that, you're probably going for it. But you feel great about that position. So the next time you get the ball back, which we did, and we felt like – I felt like I knew how they would play that situation. They weren't going to throw the ball. They're going to make us use all three timeouts, and they're going to punt the ball to us. And we're going to have the ball with a minute and a half to go. And that's exactly what happened. Unfortunately, we didn't get that opportunity. Colin Taylor. <clears throat> questions is the NCAA giving you a timeline on when Jalen's appeal might be approved no Colin they, they have not and um, I know that we're working through that right now uh, the appeal uh, with the NCAA but I don't know a, a time on that I don't I guess with shy having the game he had you'll probably see more teams will game plan more to take him out and maybe bracket him a little bit more how do you go about making sure his production maybe doesn't dip with teams keying on him or or how does that kind of change in, in Mike Bobo's mind to where you're trying to scheme him over a little bit well, I think you got to, you know, I know we will scheme him as far as is getting him in some different spots, motion shifts, uh, you know, create different spots uh, for him on the field, for him within the formation, um, whether it's outside, whether it's inside, whether it's coming from the backfield, you know, different ways to, to get him the ball. Now, with that being said, you know, and, and uh, the question was asked earlier by Eric, we got to get more guys involved in the passing game you know, to be able to do that. But the way that things were rolling the other night, our first game, them not being necessarily being able to prepare, prepare and know where people were going to be, that's kind of the way it, it's hard to adjust mid-game and say we're going to bracket coverage this guy. I mean, that's if you haven't practiced that, that's a very difficult thing to do. So, obviously, going into, you know, games moving forward, starting with Saturday with Todd, they're, they're going to be obviously trying to target shy as far as being able to take him out of the – out of, the, out of the route progression, uh, you know, and, and that's, you know, a lot of people, he wasn't always the primary target on, on some of the routes, but at the end of the day, he got open. 
And so, you know, Colin's got a progression that he goes through each play. Is there a target? Do we want to take it to a primary read? Yeah, but a lot sometimes it was a secondary read. It was, the you know, coming off the triangle and, and throwing the ball to another spot. So it wasn't always the primary guy in the, in the read process. Joe Gorcha. Coach, after looking back at the film and even just watching – Colin, throughout the game, what impressed you most about his ability to command the offense the way in which he did? I mean, to go down 21-7 to see him lead the team back. Anything stand out in your mind in the way he just led the team and kept the offense calm and moving forward? I think he's got a very calm, cool demeanor. I saw that in training camp. Uh, he's got a, uh, an air of confidence about him as a player uh, that I think uh, you know kind of permeates throughout our offense and our football team. I don't know that we ever had any panic at all at 21-7 that we were going to get back in the ball game and get some things going. I know Mike was very confident at halftime, um, you know, coming in at 14-7 and not a lot of good things happened for us after the first drive offensively. So I uh, was very confident we were going to be able to move the football. And I felt, you know, Colin uh, certainly is an extension of Mike as far as those things are concerned. Mike Kuba. You want to see the defense do a better job this week and be able to give yourself a chance against a good Florida passing attack. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, we're going to have to defend. We're going to have to be effective, affecting the quarterback with four guys rushing, uh, which, which you know, they do a nice job in protection. Um, but, you know, I, I go back and you look at the first half of last week, you know, you, you give up the third and one over 30-yard completion on their sideline. Heck of a throw and catch. We're in, we're, we're, we're in position to make the play. Let's get the ball off the guy. But you got to, at the end of the day, they're on scholarship too. Their, their guy made a great play. Uh, we defend the flea flicker. Uh, we have a guy come out of the flat. They dump it to the running back where it's a sack, sack strip maybe, and the ball's out. And now it's a 33-yard game. So in the first half, there's one drive. I'm very extremely disappointed, as I told you guys Sunday night. You know, we start the second half uh, with a drive of seven of eight runs or eight of nine runs and, and, and don't, we don't, don't get bounced around a little bit in the run game, which we, we didn't as the year as the game wore on. We hung in there okay uh, and just disappointed with that. And then there's really one, only one other drive in the game as far as a touchdown's concerned, and it's two big plays. Uh, we need to stay away from explosive plays, you know, against this team especially. And you look at when they played in Oxford on Saturday, it was a, uh, it was an, uh, a lot of explosives, a lot of, you know, uh, off-rhythm plays where he buys time in the pocket uh, and when he scrambles, he's scrambling to throw. Uh, and, and he's got really good guys down the field. He's very accurate with the football. They finish on, the, on, on balls down the field. Uh, and when they get some guys in space, in open space, he does a nice job of distributing the football, whether it's to a back, a tight end, a receiver, uh, whatever the case may be. So we, we got to stay away from explosive plays. Mitch Brown. Coach, you've uh... – You've obviously practiced in mass. How was it coaching a game in a mask? Uh, did you have to adjust a little bit there? And then secondly, uh, you talk about the receivers um, needing to create that separation. Uh, is that more of just, you know, tightening up, you know, motions in, in the routes or is that just kind of uh, more effort on the on the battle or on the route? Uh, what, what do you have to do there to win more of those one-on-one -on -one battles? Well, I'm, first of all, I'm looking forward to somebody finding a vaccine for this thing so I don't have to wear a mask anymore or anybody else doesn't have to wear a mask. <clears throat> but that's what we got to do right now. But uh, uh, and as far as, you know, creating separation, uh, whether it's, it's, it's with your arm, it's whether you're threatening the guy deep with speed and then you're able to, to, to create separation coming off the stem of the route. I mean, there's a lot of different, you know, f fundamental techniques involved with creating separation. Uh, but you got to threaten a guy before you can uh, get him to back off of you. And if you don't ever threaten a guy in the route, then he's going to sit on everything. And that's what we were doing the other night. And we had some guys that were in some intermediate spacing concepts and curl concepts and out concepts that never threaten anybody deep. And if you don't threaten a guy deep, they're going to sit on routes in our league. You know, guys can run, and they're going to bang the double moves, and they're going to sit on routes. you got to create separation uh, by threatening a guy deep and, and getting him to turn and getting him to get out of his, uh, you know, out of, out of his break and things. And we didn't do enough of that at, at, outside of Xavier and Chai. David? Will, who do you like at that uh, starting Will linebacker spot with a green out? Damani. Damani's played it. Damani's played Mike and Will since he's been here, really. Uh, he had a great camp uh, filling in for Ernest. He played over 30 snaps the other night and thought he played well. Uh, but he'll play well. Uh, Mo Caba will be his backup. 
Uh, and then, you know, Damani can play both of those spots. Spencer Easton Road can play the mic as well. We're hoping to get Rosendo back in two weeks. Eric Boynton. And then Jamar Brown as well. I'm sorry, Dave. He, he can play the Willard Dime as well. Yeah, well, you mentioned staying away from the explosive plays. Is, is just the, the main key to that, just playing assignment football, guys remaining in their gaps and maybe not trying to do more than what they're uh, told to do? Well, I think that's a huge part of it. And that was a little bit of the first drive in the third quarter. We had several guys, you know, just, and that's one of the uh, comments I always say, and I've learned a long time ago, is keep your head in your gap, do your job. And if you're supposed to have C gap control in the zone seal play, have C gap control. Don't don't peek and look in the D gap, and all of a sudden the ball's creased us inside. And we had two occasions on two runs where that happened. So, um, yeah, just doing your job, executing at a high level. And when you have opportunities to make some plays, make plays. We had a ball thrown in the flat on a critical third down. Uh, that if we work ourselves in phase, it may be a pick six. We don't we don't make the play on the third that critical third down conversion. Uh, we've you know we we've got to get the ball off some people. Uh, we we haven't done that as well in camp. Uh, as far as that's concerned. And then now moving into our first ball game, we don't get the ball off anybody uh, during the game. So we've got to do a better job of being more opportunistic defensively um, and just, you know, better, a little better execution here and there. Ben? Uh, you've talked a little about shy and kind of maybe more diversity in terms of receivers, but is that a thing that you mind if it turns out a lot of the offense flows toward one guy in the passing game? Is that necessarily a bad thing or a concerning thing, or is that maybe not that bad because you're just feeding a top playmaker? As long as we're scoring and winning, uh, we're good. And if it means going through one guy, go through one guy. If it means distributing the ball better throughout um, your offense, then that's what you need to do. It's about winning and it's about scoring points. Dick Cox. You feel good about Parker, but are you concerned right now with the rest of the kicking game? You really didn't have a lot of good field position and weren't able to flip the field the other night. Well, I, you know, again, I, I talked to Kai today, and I, I talked to him on, on Sunday as well. I said, listen, man, you're better than this. You're, you're a more talented guy. It's the first time out. I get it. Um, but but at the end of the day, we, we've got we to punt the ball better. I thought our coverage units were solid. Uh, the, the one kickoff that came out, we talked in terms of the ball position with Mitch, was not where it needs to be. Uh, the way we cover and the way we squeeze the field, if you leave it out in the middle of the field, it's going to create some stress for us uh, as far as the coverage units are concerned. So, um, you know, in that situation, and I think just overall punting the ball better, we had good protection, uh, and I think our coverage units were fine. We just overall got to punt it better. But he, he's more than capable. He's very talented uh, and uh, – you know, he's a guy that uh, – he's here for a reason. We, we, we think he's a really good player. Colin Taylor. Yeah, well, kind of sticking with special teams a little bit, you talk about using a lot of your practice time for special teams work and training camp. And I guess what's what's that look like during game week and this week? Do you do anything different given some of the struggles you guys did have uh, on special teams last week? You know, I think you you go back and, and we, we, we didn't punt it as well as we wanted to. Uh, that was – and that really comes down to the punter. You know, our coverage units were good. Our protections were good. We had one substitution issue on punt and one substitution issue for the game on special teams, which is one too many. Uh, our punt block units did a ni nice job. We really did a good job. Jamie made one poor decision. Uh, did you know? Put your heels on the ten. Back up one, two steps. That's it. He drifted and he catches the ball on the four. Now, with the guy hung the ball up there. They probably would have caught the ball there anyways. Uh, so we're, we're probably getting it there regardless. But at the end of the day, he'll learn from that. And he did a nice job other than obviously the end of the game of, of fielding the ball and communicating. And, and I felt like, again, the communication uh, was there. We, did, we just didn't, didn't execute it extremely well. Uh, kickoff return, we had no opportunities. Uh, and then uh, kickoff coverage I thought was good. And I thought Mitch kicked every kick well except for one. He hung one out in the middle. So overall, you know, obviously the end of the game is, is kills you, your opportunity to win the game. Uh, but it wasn't all, you know, bad as far as the, the special teams were concerned. But that's that's a critical area that cost us, you know, cost us an opportunity to win the game, Colin. So you, you, that can't happen. But as far as practices is concerned, you know, you go back to training camp, we've done more live work on teams uh, than we've ever done it, for the simple reason of going to that first game and having some new specialists and having a new punt returner, having a new kick returner. We knew with their kicker on kickoff, we probably weren't going to have many opportunities to return the ball. They just He's got a great leg. Unless he just misses it, we probably weren't going to get the ball out. So 
Um, but, you know, again, we got to continue to to work and improve, and what happened at the end can't happen. It costs us an opportunity to win the game. Phil Cornblick. Hey, Will. That brief video clip that made the rounds this past weekend. Why would I know you'd ask that? Why would I, why would I know you'd ask that, huh? It was an outtake between me and Justin King, okay? And if I offended anybody, I apologize, all right? But it was between me and another guy. And why in the world would I know you would ask this question? Well, they said you were going to address it after the game, but I figured you weren't in the, in the right mood for that. But Still not in the right question. mood, but I appreciate you bringing it up. Yeah, and, again, I, I apologize if I offend anybody. It's between two people. It was never meant to be public. It was between two people, and somebody obviously thought they were going to be cute and put it out there so Phil Cornbrooth could ask a question. Tiger Phil strikes again. No, no. My question was, do you know who put it, how it got out? No, but I, I'm looking forward to finding out. Yeah. No, and my other question was – Did you put it out, Phil? Did you get a hold of it? No, sir, it was not me. Oh. But my question was, if it's somebody inside your organization who did that, how would you, how would you feel about that person? I probably couldn't say it in this press conference. I don't want to use that language again, Phil. Let's go on to Mike Uva. I mean, seriously, though, why did we all know he was going to ask that? You just can't help yourself. Go ahead. On the past, you've talked about, you know, in just the way that the uh, the game has evolved over the last couple of years, you know, defenses are going to give up yards. And just the way it is now in terms of just how the offenses have evolved over the last couple of years. You've mentioned uh, about Florida with the explosive plays. Is that the same, you think, from a week-by-week -week standpoint? Or do you think in terms of going up against a team that, you know, has a lot of explosive plays, is that the same in terms of that bend don't break mentality? Well, no, I mean, I think that you're going to have a <clears throat> – different opportunities in the game where you've got to deny the ball. you got to play man coverage. Uh, there's nothing bending and breaking about that. I mean, you're, you're, trying, to, you're trying to win the down. I mean, uh, you know, we're going to pressure in the game. That's who we are. Um, so, you know, you got to – you know, defensive football is a lot like war. If you line up in, over and over again in the same spot, they're going to blow you up. So you've got to be multiple in what you do. You've got to be able to mix some zone. You've got to be able to play man to man. You've got to be able to pressure. Uh, and you've got to be able to mix those things and not be predict predictable in what you do. And, uh, and that's something, you know, obviously with an experienced quarterback that you've got to be able to uh, change things up enough where he doesn't get in a rhythm. Uh, but you, you can't sit there and, and pressure the whole game and have, you know, really skilled guys on the perimeter, you know, with him opportunities to throw the football. They throw the back shoulder balls extremely well. They hit two touchdowns, I believe. I know one to Grimes. Uh, on Saturday, but but Kyle's thrown that ball extremely well in his time at Florida. Uh, so those are all, um, you know, things you got to consider. Be multiple in what you do. Change things up. Uh, try to confuse the picture as much as possible. Make him make decisions after the ball is snapped uh, on where he thinks he's going to be taking the football. Ben Brenner. Uh, hey, Coach. Is, um, is Devontae Davis a guy who's in the mix at the defensive tackle position for you guys at all? What's his kind of situation? Uh, Devontae uh, has struggled with some, some uh, uh, off-the-field things, and he's back with us now, and nothing serious. He's nothing, nothing, he's done nothing wrong. He's done absolutely zero wrong. Um, so he's back with us now and actually started back his first practice today. Uh, so he's, he's good to go. We're trying to get him back in the fold, get him back in shape a little bit. He had to miss some time, but it was nothing that was from a disciplinary standpoint. It was absolutely nothing to do with that. And so we're just working him back in the rotation right now. Excited about him. Rick Henry. Hey, Bill, I just want you to know that I did not release that video. Yeah. Just want to be clear about that. Yeah, that's good. Also, in addition to having to wear a mask. I mean, my mom had to call me before the game and, and, and get on me about it. So, you know, I'm 49 years old. I think. Yeah, I am 49. Go ahead. If mama's, if mama's not happy, you know you've done it. That's right. Hey, Will, um, this is your first road trip in this COVID-19 era. I was just wondering, how much do you have to change your schedule or your routine, your normal routine, after you get on site, especially on Friday? Well, I know that our travel party will not be what it normally is. It is, it is going to be strictly the, the team, the coaches, um, and in, in, in a very small support staff group uh, so we can social distance in the plane. Um, that's starting there. That's number one. Uh, 
We're going to have more buses because you got to spread out in the buses uh, to be able to be social distant in the buses so you don't get a contact tracing situation there if, if a player does test positive on a Sunday after the game. Uh, so you got to be able to, when you fly to the game, return from the game and bus to and bus from, and we'll stay in Ocala the night before. So you got to be social distance in those situations. Uh, and then Kristen Coggin and our nutrition people are handling most of the meals that we have. So uh, we're not trying to come into contact uh, with, the, with the unknown and expose our players, our staff, our team to the unknown in a hotel situation. Um, but we know that the hotel we're staying in and has obviously uh, been sanitized properly uh, as far as that's concerned. And uh, so, again, that's uh, those are the protocols that really are being done by Clint Haggard and George Wynn. Uh, and then our travel will be a, a much smaller party than it is used to um, on normal occasions. Good question, Rick. Dick Cox with the next one. A lot of people look at the drop pass by Muse. They look back at the ball hitting the player on the punt and all. Do you feel like the turning point of the game was after you had the great drive on the first possession and then get excellent field position? Uh and not be able to get any points on that. And how disappointed were you after taking a 7-0 lead and getting the ball back after they muffed the punt and all of not being able to score then? Well, we needed to get points there. There's no doubt. Um, but, you know, it's like I told our team, no, no one play loses the game. No one play, uh, you know, wins or loses any game. It, it's, it's five to seven to eight plays in the game. You can always go back. And generally, if it's a one-score game, and I, and I told our football team, I told our staff, you know, playing a 10-game conference schedule, seven or eight of these games are going to come down to the last possession, whether it's on offense to win it, whether it's on defense to make a stop, whether it's on special teams to make or defend a play. And that's just the way it's going to be. When you, It's no different when I was coaching the National Football League. Look at the number of percentage of, of games that come down to one minute. It's, it's, it's every week. It's the percentage of games that come down to a one-score game, and that's the way it's going to be when you play the quality of opponents that we're playing every single week, and that's part of it, and you got to embrace it. We're 14-8 and eight in one-score games here, which is you know, close to 70% winning percentage, which is good. Uh, when it needs to be better. It certainly needs to have been better Saturday night. Uh, but you, know, you could look at probably five, eight uh, plays, Dick, that, that you could go back and say, if this falls our way, you know, different outcome. But you know, it didn't, so that's why Tennessee won. Colin Taylor. Yeah, well, two things. I guess, what are some tendencies, uh, some staples of a Dan Mullen kind of coached offense? And how do you guys, in, in terms of practice squad or scout team, go about mirroring maybe a Kyle Trask and a Kyle Pitts? Well, that's hard. That's very difficult. Uh, there's not a lot out there uh, as far as that's concerned. Um, but, uh, you know, I think the thing that with Dan is, is he's always going to find ways to run the football. And over the years when I was at Auburn in, in the, uh, 2006, 2007, he was at Florida as offensive coordinator, his time at Mississippi State. I was at Auburn as defense coordinator again. And then the time that since we've been here and faced him at Mississippi State, our first year, our second game, I believe, and then uh, the last two years, he's going to find ways to run the football. He's going to find ways to stay balanced. If you find something, you can, you can bet you'll see it again. Uh, uh, he's Some of these – Play callers will hit you on a play, and then they never go back to it. It's, it's mind-boggling to me. But he does a really good job of finding things that work, and, and you better defend it, and you better have an adjustment for it. And if you don't, you'll see it the rest of the game. So, uh, But he does a really good job of running the football and obviously does a good job throwing it as well. Eric Boynton. Well, how big of an advantage is it for a team when they've got a tight end like Pitts, a guy that big, that fast, that big of a – of a, of a mismatch so many times. How big of an advantage is that? And has Pitts kind of evolved into one of the, the better pass-catching tight ends you've seen uh, over your years in the SEC? He is. He is a, he's a very difficult guy to match up on. He's a threat in the middle of the field. He creates a lot of run-pass issues depending on how you want to defend him. Uh, if you want to get in a bunch of man coverage, you're going to create some 50-50 balls for him. And they've got other guys that can win in one-on-one -on -one coverage. If you want to play a lot of zone, Trask is extremely accurate in zone coverage. Uh, he completes a very high percentage in zone coverage, uh, and Pitts does a really good job of finding open spaces in zone. Uh, and then what I've seen over him his last two years, uh, because he was the year before uh, 
two years ago when we went down there, he was a true X receiver. Uh, that's what he was. But he's developed himself into a guy that can tie people up in the C area uh, on the line of scrimmage. And, and, and again, a, 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 a tie is a, is a win for the offense. He eats up a defensive player for the down on, in a run, run game situation, a power play, a counter play, whatever the case may be. You know, that's a win for the offense. So uh, he's developed himself to be able to do that. And he creates issues as far as creating a three-man surface in the run game, the passing game. Is he releasing? Is he blocking? I mean, those are all things you got to kind of go through. And then they do a good job of moving around in some different spots to create opportunities for him to get him the ball. So you just, you got to be aware of where he is and understand where he is and, um, and, and make sure that you're capped on him uh, in zone and in and, and man situations with the right guy. Ben? Uh, on that throwback play that Tennessee hit on you guys uh, late in the game, was, was that a matter of them just having kind of a good scheme for what you guys were doing defensively, or did someone maybe step out of position? What, what kind of happened on that play? No, we lost our eyes at the safety position. We should have made the play as a play we practiced. Hale? Obviously, you guys rotate several bodies in a defensive tackle, but over the course of a game, how, how do you all determine – how that rotation looks is it a, sort of a hot hand kind of approach like whoever's playing better or well anything um well i think you know who's playing well and tracy watches those guys uh, hard as far as who he feels like playing with the right kind of pad level the right kind of effort uh you know inside uh, we're doing a little bit probably more movement with uh jabari and kier uh than we do with uh you know zach and, and rick and, and some of the other guys in the game uh, because of just girth and in, in, in things, and we're playing a little bit less three down than probably we've ever played before. Uh, but that's just kind of where we are. Um, but, uh, but that's kind of how we monitor that. Uh, you know, th at the end of the day, the most exerting thing you do is rush the passer, especially for big guys inside. And what we can't do is in the critical times of the game, end of half, end of game, third down, we got to have our best guys on the field. And, and I always tell the coaches in the fourth quarter, let's make sure that our best players are fresh and they're able to go have an opportunity to go win the game. Um, so that's just – we monitor, we count snaps on, on everybody on our team uh, from the box uh, to make sure to know about snap count and where we are. Uh, and we're constantly trying to update – update ourselves as far as those things are concerned about, you know, so-and-so's had X amount of snaps. We're midway through the second quarter. That's too many snaps for him right now. We, we got to sit him down and we got to get somebody else in there for him. Uh, so that's something we monitor through the game. And, and I would imagine you probably feel comfortable with one more guy being able to rotate in and out to be able to better manage that. Well, certainly. I mean, you know, MJ Webb's done some nice things uh, last week, and now going into this week, we feel good about that. We hope we're glad to get Devontae back. Uh, could be a guy that can figure into those things. You know, Aaron Sterling's been a guy in, in one minute and third down situations that can rush inside for us, um, that, that can do that. Brad can move over and play some end for us if he needs to. So we've got some flexibility there, you know, with that. And a lot of times, Hale, it goes to what kind of – how hot is it? You know, you know, temperature-wise, you know, if our guys are getting gas. I mean, those are all things we, we talk about pregame uh, as far as, you know, number of snaps. Uh, the, the the weather and the things that we you know we we kind of go through on Thursday. The last question today goes to John Whittle. Phil doesn't get it. Brad Johnson is a guy we heard uh, a lot about coming into this season. How how did he play the other night? Did he, did he play a lot of snaps? Yeah, I don't. I'll, at the top of my head, I don't know. He's playing both Sam and Buck. He can play end as well, John. Uh, but yeah, Brad's you know uh, really done a nice job for us. Rushing the passer situationally, uh, playing the Sam linebacker for us. I thought he played well, set some edges on the defense, did a nice job. Uh, so, again, I think he's going to continue to improve. It's a new position for him. There's still some learning involved with that. Uh, but, but a guy that, you know, has given us some, a lot of pass rush in the past. And I thought, again, you know, Saturday we got to continue to get him in those situations more, especially going down with a team that, you know, uh, throws the ball extremely well. We've got to be able to get some edge presence as far as the rush is concerned. All right. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate All right. your time. Have a great day. See you, Phil.